if you still have these on your bike, I can't even put into words how disappointed in you I am. It's, it's time to air out, it's time to air out some suspension. Chase of Legend Suspensions here. And today's video, we're gonna be talking about the difference in stock air suspension versus Legend Suspensions air suspension. Now, there's a really, really bad stigma across the motorcycle industry with air suspension. And this little culprit right here is really to blame. And if this is the only experience that you have with air suspension, well, I gotta tell you, you're really, really missing out on a lot better ride, a lot better features if this is all that you're going off of. So <clears throat> let's kind of break down this shock and do a little bit of a comparison here. Now, this basically came on, oh, let's see, 99 to about 2015 touring bikes. And this is what's classified technically or by most people that have them as an air shock. And we get asked an awful lot of times at shows, you know, I want suspension. And we say, do you want air coils? And sometimes people will immediately go, well, I don't want air suspension. And I say, why not? And they say, well, I have air suspension on my bike. And that's where the conversation turns into more of an educational situation. Because this air shock and this air shock is, like the first airplane ever built versus Elon Musk sending something into space. So let's break down the differences here and kind of show you some of the differences. So this is what is called an emulsion style air shock. So there's oil in here. You're pumping air into that oil. You're emulsifying it. Now, if you look around the parking lot of really anywhere, the majority of vehicles are gonna have emulsions shocks on them that is not a new technology. It's been around for a very, very long time. They are very inconsistent. They are very hard to tune and they are not your best option for motorcycles. A pair of these bad boys cost right in the realistic neighborhood of about $8 a pair to manufacture. And you can kind of see why. There's just not a lot of good in this. It, fits a bill for putting on a motorcycle. But when you go to put air in these, they really aren't functioning the way that they're supposed to. And when they are, they're very inconsistent and they're very hard to tune because you're just adding air pressure into oil, emulsifying it, and you're not getting anywhere near what you should be. So if that's your first experience with air suspension, the world's changed quite a bit and it's time to catch you up. Okay, so here we have air, our air shock. Now this shock extends to 13 inches, comes equipped with spherical bearings. You have a damper here that has oil and gas inside of it, as well as adjustable rebound. And this is going to be very, very similar build internally to a coil shock. What you're really replacing here is the air spring is taking place of a coil spring. So where you would need to adjust preload on a coil spring by raising and lowering that coil spring to add or take away holding power for passengers and so on. The convenience that you're getting here is adding and taking away air pressure by pushing a button on your handlebar control. That is really convenient for several things, whether you need to just get the bike low enough to load up a passenger, Maybe you've got an injury that prevents you from being able to get on a regular seated height motorcycle. Maybe your passenger likes it a little bit lower. Maybe you pull up to a fuel pump and you don't feel quite as stable on your feet, uneven gravel, the list goes on and on of the advantages of why you would want an air shock. So extending to 13 inches, it's generally gonna be rode in about the 12 inch point. That's giving you one inch of sag and will compress all the way down to 10 and a quarter inches. And we're measuring that center bolt to center bolt. That's gonna get you quite a bit lower than just about anything else. Now, one of the main 
folks that tend to like this shock have ditched this and they've gone to a fixed short 10 inch shock. And in going that low, you're really, really giving up all of your ride quality to get it low enough to touch the ground. And it becomes a double-edged sword of, now it's low enough, but now I can't touch the, you know, I can touch the ground, but it's so uncomfortable I don't wanna ride the bike. And that's where the advantage of air ride comes in. That's gonna let you still have the 99% of the time that you're not touching the ground, a nice comfortable ride with three inches of travel and adjustable rebound, but you pull off the interstate, you're on a back road, wherever you need to drop this down so you can touch, voila, push a button, you let it out. Solo and two up riding. That is another category where maybe you don't want to adjust a coil shock for your solo and two up riding. You're going to work every single day. On the weekends, you do more two up riding. That's oftentimes going to require a preload change on a coil shock. With an air shock, you're gonna be able to simply add or remove air pressure. And if you're monitoring that pressure with a gauge, you're gonna be able to set your sag for your two up riding, set your sag for your solo riding, take all the guesswork out and you're really just going between those two different PSIs and you've got an ideal ride for you when you're solo and an ideal ride when you're two up. So the next topic would be reliability. Now we've, Heard people say, well, is it as reliable as a coil shock? Does it ride as good as a coil shock? What am I giving up by getting an air shock? And the real answer is nothing. You're gaining some things. They may or may not be something that you want for your riding application, but realistically, if you wanna talk about performance and how this shock performs compared to say something like a Revo A, the damper internals, the way that the shock is adjusted is all identical. So you're going to get comfort and performance. Also, you're gonna get on the fly adjustment as well as the ability to change the height of your shock depending on what you need, whether you're a shorter rider or any of the things that I've previously listed. And there's a whole host of other things. If you're hooking up a trailer and you need to add more pressure to the shock to give you the correct ride, these give you a whole bunch of improvements that while a coil shock can handle them, it could potentially be better suited for an air shock. This is especially important on a tri-glide or a freewheeler where the shock isn't as accessible and you can push a button on an air ride and adjust that shock for your solo into a riding or a whole bunch of gear in the trunk where you don't necessarily have to make a coil adjustment and you're getting the convenience of just simply adjusting this air. So if you think, well, I'm traveling across the country, I'm doing lots of riding. Yes, there is inherently more moving parts in an air shock than a coil shock. However, there are tens of thousands of these kits on the market running flawlessly all over the place, all over the world. When they are installed correctly, you really don't run into a whole lot of issues with this suspension. Does it have wear items? Yes, so does a coil shock. So don't cancel out needing this shock because you think at some point you may have to rebuild them. You have to rebuild all shocks. So simple wear items are covered under warranty. And you know whether you're doing a lot of cruising on the road or long distance riding, but you wanna stop and cruise through some canyons or go ride the tail of the dragon or go do a whole bunch of aggressive riding, you absolutely will not outride this shock. This shock is going to perform flawlessly for you, whether you are maxing out that motorcycle on a track or whether you're just cruising down the interstate. You're just getting different features in this shock that allow you to adjust the height and adjust on the fly, which is what a lot of times people say, well, I have a coil shock and I do a lot of two up riding and I don't necessarily want to adjust that shock every time I'm changing the weight. This is your answer right here. This is perfect. Replace this stock $8 set of shocks with a quality set of air ride that have a lifetime warranty that have spherical rod bearings to help eliminate suspension bind, that have your height adjustability, that have your rebound adjustability, that have very, very similar internals as a coil shock and all the features and benefits of air in performance and in comfort 
as well as safety. There's bump stops inside of this shock that when it's aired all the way down, will keep your fender from ever coming in contact with your tire or wiring harness or custom paint. There really is no cons to this piece here. So if you're considering something like air suspension or maybe you've completely ruled it out and you're still trying to decide on a coil shock, but there's some lingering things that you need that air ride can provide, we would strongly suggest that you take a look at the Air or Air A. We have those for just about every Harley fitment that there is. If you have any additional questions on this, please reach out to customer service, service at legendsuspensions.com. You can also use our live chat feature on our website. It is manned by live real techs that work in the customer service department. They're happy to help you. They will go through every single detail of this shock and make sure that you're getting exactly what you need. Check with your local motorcycle shop. And next time you look at air, you gotta ask yourself, what is the experience that the person has with air? Because if this is somebody's opinion of air suspension, and this is as far as their extent of knowledge goes, you're really missing the boat here by not giving this a try. So hopefully the video is informative. And again, check with your shop, check with us. If you have any questions, we're happy to help. We'll see you next time on Tech Tuesday. Hey, Chase with Legend Suspensions here, and today's video is about really good suspension and terrible suspension. <laughs> <laughs> One of these suspensions belongs in a dump truck. Okay, let's try this again. Are you still going? Yeah. Okay, you've been doing the video the whole time. I can't even put into words how disappointed I am. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Ha cha cha.